As we prepare for Season 5 of the Amazing Build series and the release of Alatrion, we have to remember that not all Hunters have access to the same gear, weapons and especially jewels. I'm Datblade with a budget build for the Light Bowgun in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now the main purpose of a budget build is to provide a build for newer Hunters who do not have a large jewel collection. Thus the builds in these videos make use of a lot of alpha armor pieces and should allow for newer players to farm more jewels for their collection. When it comes to the light bowgun, or in fact both bowguns, builds can be subdivided into which ammo you wish to use. With the light bowgun the most effective ammo currently is sticky ammunition, whether it be rapid fire 2 or sticky ammo 3. As a result I'm making an artillery build that makes use of sticky ammo 3. This will allow us to deal efficient fixed damage to a monster regardless of their defenses. So, for this build you'll need the Zora Headgear Alpha, the Zora Hide Alpha, Gyros Van Braces Beta, Zora Spine Alpha, Kieran Lidgar's Beta, and for my charm I'm using the Razor Sharp Charm. As for my weapon, I'm using the Blackwing Bowgun 2. This is the Yanguruga Light Bowgun, although you can also get away with other Light Bowguns, such as the Naga Kuga Light Bowgun, if you haven't got access to Yanguruga yet. Now, if you have access to augmentations, I'd recommend an attack increase augmentation and then an augmentation of your choice to which I've gone for a slot upgrade augmentation. As for the custom upgrades, I've simply gone for increasing the raw attack of the weapon. As for the specialist tools, these are down to personal preference. Now, when it comes to the jewels, remember this is a budget build, so we're not using any rare jewels here. So, first of all, I'd recommend vitality jewels for the health boost skill, protection jewels for the divine blessing skill. If you have them, I'd recommend destroyer jewels or KO jewels for either the part breaker or slugger skill, and then you'll have a jewel to play around with, to which I've simply gone for a fortitude jewel to provide us the fortify skill. As with all these budget builds though, if you do not have what is shown here, you can simply replace them with what you have available, and it shouldn't make too much of a difference to the build. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which would be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables, you have an attack of 394 with 25% base affinity, although as we are using sticky ammunition, which deals fixed damage, you don't have to worry about affinity whatsoever with this build. You have an average deviation, and when it comes to the custom mods, these are important. You need two recoil suppressors and two evading reload mods. The reload time for Sticky Freeze on this light bowgun is quite long, and the evade reloading allows us to completely ignore and counter this. Anyway, as for the special ammo, you have the Wyvern Blast, and when it comes to your defense, you have an okay defense of 991. That is strong against fire and thunder, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. Now, when it comes to the skills, you've got a fair few of them here. First of all is Artillery at level 5. Artillery will increase the damage of our sticky ammunition. Normally this can only get to level 3, but at level 5, the damage is increased even further. You have Tremor Resistance level 3, a byproduct of the armor we're wearing, but helps make us completely immune to any form of Tremor attack. You have Health Boost level 3, allowing our health to get to that maximum of 200. You have Ammo Up level 3, which allows us to increase the clip size of our various ammunitions, and this is needed so we can get sticky free ammunition up from one bullet in the clip to two. Anyway, you also have Part Breaker level 3, this is a byproduct of the jewels, this will allow us to break monster body parts more easily. You have Divine Blessing level 3, which is a useful quality of life and defensive skill, which allows us to potentially take less damage when we take a hit from a monster. You have Fortify level 1, which is a skill that when we faint, we come back with increased attack and defense. This buff can be applied twice. Anyway, you have Flinch 3 level 1, a byproduct of the armor, but helps us resist minor small attacks from monsters or knockbacks from allies. You have Effluvial Resistance level 1, which again is another byproduct of the armor we're wearing. This basically helps resist the effluvial effects in the Rotten Veil vale or Rotten Veil vale zone of the Guidelands. And finally, you have Spare Shot level 1. Spare Shot is a skill that gives us a chance of not consuming a bullet when we fire the weapon. This not only saves us ammunition, but it can also increase our overall attack by reducing the amount of times we have to reload. And then finally for the set bonus you have Zora Magdaros Essence Artillery Secret, allowing us to increase the artillery skill from level 3 to a maximum of level 5, increasing the sticky ammo damage. So there we have it, that is the light bowgun budget build I recommend. But of course every build out there comes with pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its fixed damage output. So it's able to deal efficient damage to a monster regardless of what your affinity rating is, regardless of what monster body part you are hitting, and regardless of what monster resistance it comes with, you're able to deal efficient damage to it, making hunts feel quite easy. On top of that, this also links into our second pro, which is you don't have to use the Clutch Claw whatsoever with this build. So if you're not a fan of the Iceborne's Clutch Claw, this is a build I'd recommend for you. And then finally, for the pros, this is a build that can be used pretty much against any monster out there, 
as sticky ammo deals fixed damage like I mentioned already. But unfortunately there are cons. The biggest con for this build is unfortunately you're going to have to get used to crafting ammo during a hunt via the radial menu. This is one of the biggest learning curves when using sticky ammunition. You can only carry a small amount into battle, however you can carry lots of the raw materials needed to actually craft the ammunition type. And the other con is this build relies on evade reloading to be effective. Evade reloading in itself isn't really a con, but if you mess up the evade reload maneuver, you're going to leave yourself open while you reload manually. But regardless, this is probably one of the most efficient builds out there, especially for a budget build, and it's not too different to the end game meta versions of this build as well. It's effective at pretty much taking on any monster in the game, and is highly recommended to anyone who likes the light bowgun. So that is the budget build for the light bowgun. Of course, as you farm more and more, hunters will get more gear and weaponry, as well as expand their jewel collection. When this happens, I hope the other builds featured in the Amazing Build series will come in useful. So until next time, I've been Dartblade, bringing you a budget build for the light bowgun in Monster Underworld Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.